Smoky. So Anna and I got a lot of material, video material today, which was really, really fun. And I'm just going to finish it with a little segment on parts of the horse's body. Uh, this is Smokey. I'm going to introduce my model. This is my model for this section. This is Smokey. I love Smokey. He's adorable and sweet and wonderful. Smokey, as you can tell by his confirmation, is half draft. He's half Pertron, which is a draft breed, and he's half quarter horse, which is American bred. So we love the mix. He came out really, really well. Um, he's nine years old. He's about 15, two on his tiptoes. Um, he, he came to me wearing front shoes, so he's wearing front shoes. Um, he's a delightful individual. Very, very sweet. Very willing. Um, basically just a walk truck canter horse right now. He's just learning about the arena and how to steer and how to do transitions and trails. So you can see uh, he's a really big, expressive mover. So um, dressage, western dressage, working at any of the competitive trail stuff. He'd be really fun on a drill team, that type of thing. Um, but he's, he's massive. I mean, he is massive. You really see it when you're with him. So that's my model. Uh, parts of the horse. So these are the parts of the horse that I feel every equestrian should know. All right? So it's not going to be the little muscles and the little tiny this and the little tiny that and the intricate this and that. This is the broad strokes. Broad strokes of the, part of the parts of the horse's body that I feel that anybody that has anything to do with being a horse person, horse man or woman, should know. All right? So we start with, hi, buddy. Well, you know all about this. So there's the obvious. There's the muzzle, the eye, the ear, the forehead, the cheek. Okay. This part here between the ears is called the pole. P-O-L-L. -L, pole. Very important part for you guys to remember. Right here between the horse's ears is called the pole. When you're schooling a horse properly in dressage, the pole always needs to be the highest point. So when you watch a dressage horse going around that, uh, well, this is horses. Is it okay? Yeah. Can we still see him okay? Yeah, I'm going to move over. Should I shift him back? You can shift him back or I can move. Um, so... Are we still recording? Yep. Oh, good. Yay. I'm glad you did that. I like this candid stuff. You know, horses move. It's horses, you people. Move <laughs> this, is a, this is a situational thing. Huh, Betty? Huh, Betty? Uh, so, the pole. Oh, yes. Pole. So, for dressage, when you have the horse properly in a frame, not in a warm-up frame, but, of course, <laughs> properly in a frame, uh, the pole always has to be the highest point. The forehead needs to be either on the vertical or the nose poked out just in front of the vertical. That's your dressage frame. All right? So that's where the pole comes in. The pole always has to be the highest point. The pole there. All right? Obviously his neck. This is called his crest. The top of his neck is called his crest. If they... Uh, he, I didn't really groom him, guys, so you're going to see there's shavings in his mane. Um... But if a horse has built their top line, I'll get back to that, properly, they have a nice developed crest, all right? You want the underside of the neck, this part of the neck, not to be muscled up. You want this part to be relaxed and not muscled. And then you want the muscle along the crest, all right? The shoulder, the chest. This is the forearm. Am I in the way? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. This is the elbow, believe it or not. That's his elbow there. Forearm, knee. This is his cannon. This is my favorite part of the horse's body because I think it's pretty. This is his cannon where your galloping boots go. This is called the fetlock. If you want to call it the ankle, you can call it the ankle, but it's actually the fetlock here. This is the pastern. This part that connects the the flesh part of the horse to
to the hook is called the coronet band. Coronet band, and then obviously the hoof. Another session we'll talk about the parts of the hoof, but we don't need to do that today. So you got all of that. Hmm. So we've got the pole, crest, neck, chest, shoulder, elbow, forearm, knee, cannon, fetlock, pastern, coronet band, hoof. You got to memorize it, guys. You got to memorize it. Pull it up online and memorize it. It sounds like a lot right now, but, you know, after you know it, you know it. Withers. Important. Everybody knows about the withers right here. So we, we um, measure the height of the horse at the wither. And the wither is really important with saddle fit, um, that sort of thing. This horse is a really nice size wither. He has a really nice back for uh, bareback riding. Um, kind of built like what we call a couch, kind of built like a couch, so really comfortable to ride bareback. Wither. Don't forget it. This is actually just called his back. This is his barrel, which is easy. It looks like a barrel. Oh, buddy. Uh, the other important one, top of the booty, is called the croup. Croup, like um, the coughing illness. C-R-O-U-P, croup. Top of the booty is the croup, all right? Very important. When a horse is working properly in any of the performance horse disciplines, they get lower in their booty. They sit a little, they sit and they engage. Uh, and so obviously the croup goes down. Um, but the croup is important. This is the loin. This is actually one of the most important parts of the horse to me, um, is the loin area. Because if you don't have a strong loin, you don't have a strong horse, they can't sit and engage and carry. So. The loin is here between the back and the croup is the loin, all right? And you're gonna see on a really weak horse or on an undeveloped horse, you're gonna see there's a, there'll probably be a dip here. You can see that this hasn't been muscled. It hasn't filled out in muscle. You know, he's a horse, so he's gonna wiggle. He's gonna wiggle, he's a horse. Um, so, but you see how he, this horse is really well muscled in his loin area. So it just means that we've developed him properly. We've created a good physical foundation. Of course, they always get really good mental foundations with me because I love them so much and I tell them how awesome they are all the time. Tell your horse how great he is all the time and he or she. Um, okay, that's that. All right. Ready for this one? That's the stifle, right there. You do not want stifle issues. You do not want stifle injuries. They're monsters, and they will end horses' careers. So we really, really try to try to stay away from any kind of stifle issue. Um, if you're looking to buy a horse and they say, "Well, he had an issue with his stifle, but he's it's healed." still be really careful. They can re-injure. I stay away from anything having to do with stifle injuries. All right, so let's, just so you know that, but this is a stifle here. This is called the Gaskin. So, um, sort of adjacent to the forearm, right, is the Gaskin. And when your horse is well muscled uh, and fit, uh, you, you do get a good muscle here in the Gaskin area. Uh, the hawk, everybody heard of the hawk. Everybody knows about the hawk. Uh, the hawk, um, you know, it, it takes a lot of wear and tear. Uh, there's all sorts of maintenance stuff you can do for the hawks. Don't swing around, baby. I don't want you to swing around. I want you to stay where you are. The hawk, and then it's all easy from there because it's the same as the front leg, all right? So from there down under the hawk, it's the same. It's cannon. Fetlock, pastor, and coronet band. Um, the thing that his wiener is in is called the sheath. Wiggle butt. Wiggle. Hey, wiggle. Oh, doesn't want us talking about his private. <laughs> uh, the thing that is that his privates are in is called the sheath. All right. We're almost done. Oh, the hip. Right. Haunch. Top of the tail 
is called the dock of the tail, like a shipping dock, D-O-C-K, dock of the tail. I'm a real stickler, you guys. Groom the dock of the tail every day. Every single day, if you groom from here to here, if you, brush, if you use a hairbrush, I go to the dollar store and get a dollar brush. If you uh, brush the hair from here to here every day, your tail is going to grow out really, really nicely. They're not going to itch the tail. We all have other segments where I talk about tail itching. Um, but if you make sure those little pieces aren't there in the dock of the tail, you're going to have a much healthier, nicer tail. Did I get them all? Um, I can't think of any more. I think I got them all. I think I got it. Oh, one last piece, the top line. All right, so the top line is the entire top line of the horse from the pole over the crest, over the back, all the way to the back of the tail. And then you guys know that the, the vertebrae, his backbone goes all the way to here, right? So when a horse is quote unquote on the bit, they're on the bit all the way to the end of their tail. Which is why uh, when horses are relaxed and on the bit, a lot of times they'll swing their tail as they're working, as you're walking and trotting, um, because they're on the bit all the way to the end of their tail. So very, very important uh, with a performance horse to um, have a strong top line. All this work we do with performance horses is to build a strong top line. And say you just want to have a trail horse, and you're going to have him in your backyard, and you're going to keep him forever, or her forever. You still want a strong top line, because the more, so if you're utilizing the belly muscles, the more the back is up, the more you're building back muscle here, the longer your horse is going to last. They're going to hold up much longer. They're going to last much longer. They're going to stay much stronger and much healthier physically. I remember one. It's the um, chestnut. So this little bony, funny-looking callus -y thing here is called the chestnut. All right? The chestnut, very briefly, is um, part of evolution. Uh, initially, when, ho when horses were first created all the way back, they just looked like little dogs and they had toes like dogs did, do. And over the millions of years, please don't quote me, I don't know exactly how many years, but over the years, uh, they developed into hoofs and they think the chestnut is the last of the toes that is going away and no longer being utilized. So in another thousand years, maybe the chestnut will disappear because it's the last remnant of when we had horses that had toes like dogs. One more, you guys are gonna sometimes find these bony growths back here. There's a bony growth right there, back on the back of the fetlock, and a bony growth here on the back of the fetlock. Most people don't know, it's called an ergo or ergot. It's E-R-G-O-T. Ergo or ergot is that funny little bony growth on the back of the fetlocks. It's made out of the same material as the chestnuts. <sighs> I think we got it. See you next time.